The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. This is Andy Kizik. While we're waiting for people to dial in, we want to welcome you to the OTC Markets Educational Series, today focusing on the benefits of sponsored research. So we'll wait about uh, a minute. Uh, the attendees are populating very quickly, so I will sign off for about 30 seconds to a minute before we get started. We still have a lot of people dialing in, so I'm just going to wait another 30 seconds to a minute before we get started. Then we'll go through housekeeping and get started with the educational series. Good morning and welcome to the OTC Markets Educational Webinar Series for 2019. My name is Andy Kizik, Senior Vice President of Advisor Relations, and I am your host and moderator for today's event. Just before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Um, your phones are on mute. As you have questions, you can populate the Q&A box on the upper right side of the Citrix uh, dial-in. Um, we will be answering all questions at the end of the webinar. Um, copies of the webinar and the presentation will be available after the webinar. And a, for future review, we will have an archive of the uh, webinar, both on our OTC Markets link under the Events tab and also on our YouTube channel. Um, so today, we will be discussing the benefits of sponsored research. And before I introduce our guest presenter, Richard Henke from Zach's Small Cap Research, I just want to give you a very, very brief overview of what OTC Markets has done to launch the research marketplace for our micro cap issuers. So the re equity research is a cornerstone of better informed and more efficient markets. With traditional coverage tied to trading activity, it can be very difficult for small cap, micro cap issuers to receive analyst attention or sell side attention. And in many cases, they have to turn to sponsored research, sponsored corporate research. That can cause problems for how do I choose a research house? What are the criteria? So about a year ago, TC market decided to continue with its proud review, vetting, and compliance process to vet research houses and create some standards that our issuer customers and issuer companies can rely upon in shortcutting their process to selecting coverage. Today, we have eight research providers on the research marketplace. And joining us today is Zach's small cap research, Richard Henke, who will cover a lot of topics related to the how, why, what the benefits and choices are for sponsored research. So without further ado, I want to turn it over to Richard, who will start with a little overview. All right. Thank you, Andy. Um, okay. This, we're gonna, I'm going to build, build uh, our way up through this thing. Um, talk a little bit about the landscape, get into, you know, the benefits of research, you know, uh, any kind of research, uh, talk a little bit about, you know, what about sell-side research, and then get into 
why you know sponsored research you know matters by the way if it's not clear to everyone on the call sponsored research is where the company pays for it uh, talk about the advantages of sponsored research and there are advantages and then I'll get to the uh, you know the elephant in the room you know is sponsored research credible is it biased and we'll we'll conclude with some do's and don'ts all right so 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 Richard yeah get started. why don't you give us just a picture of the research landscape okay um, well, as a matter of fact, you guys conducted a poll uh, a while back, and uh, that poll indicated that about 70% of the participants, you know, 70% of the participants who responded to the poll, they have no covering analysts, and that's right on the slide. You can see that. What's interesting to me is 5% uh, of the respondents said they don't know if they have any covering analysts. So that I'm not sure how that works, but uh, and the other. 10% of them didn't know what sponsored research is, and we'll hopefully, uh, for you, those 10% on the call, we'll talk a little bit about that. I mean, the reality is, and we're not, I'm not saying anything that most people in this call don't know. I mean, the, the big, you know, small caps, micro caps, don't have, they're invisible. They just don't have, um, you know, nobody's aware of them. Uh, they, they're not, they don't get, they don't have very low trading activity. They don't have liquidity, and they're, they don't have the benefit of, of maybe larger companies where if they don't have, research coverage, you know, the Bloombergs, the CNBCs, the Seeking Alpha would fill in the void uh, if they, you know, for a situation where there are no, uh, you know, uh, research analysts covering the company. So that's, I don't think there's anything in there that most of you on the call are uh, not familiar with. So Richard, now that we can start talking about some details, the study was quite revealing, but what does a company, why does a company need research at all? Well. Um, let me give, I mean, some of the things in here are going to be, you know, facts that everyone's aware of. Some of these are going to be, you know, opinions of myself and, and Zach's uh, SCR, which, you know, we've been in business for over 10 years doing fundamental research on, on micro cap companies. So I just want to throw that out there. I mean, um, the bottom line is um, a company that needs visibility with investors. All right. Um, there, it's a perception thing also. All right. If, if you don't have research analysts, the brokers aren't going to recommend you. Institutions are going to shy away from you. Uh, you're unvetted. All right. And you want, you want good third party research to complement whatever press releases you might put out there. So uh, I think another thing is my uh, third bullet point there. You know, if you've got research, you're going to have estimates. And if you have estimates, you're going to bring quant funds into the picture, right? Where they're, they're not going to get involved with you. And, you know, if you don't have estimates out there, and they're going to come from these, you know, third-party analysts. Um, one thing I want to step back um, and talk a little bit. You got to, you know, if you want research coverage, you have to think about what is, what are you trying to accomplish, you know, with your ownership profile. If you have no idea what you're trying to accomplish with your ownership and things like that, you need to answer that question yourself first before you start thinking about, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, research coverage and things like that. That's kind of investor relations 101. But research is going to give you the constant visibility with investors. It's going to give you that constant stream of, of, of good information on your company that's going to fill the void that otherwise would be filled by possibly bad information. So uh, we can go on and on, but I think there's, you know, research matters. Let's put it that way. So the points are very clear. But tell me, you know, we're aware that investment banks, integrated investment banks, provide um, – Sell side research. Why don't you tell us a little bit about about that? Yeah, and and again, I'm I'm, I'm going to uh, write. You know, so far we're, I'm I'm probably not saying a lot that uh, most people on this uh, uh, on this call have not seen or, or felt. Um, you know, MIFID two is uh, you know come about in Europe. It's working its way over here. It's really hit you know the investment banking world. You know, the research arms of investment banks, particularly in the small cap small cap side. So. You know, sponsored research is frankly filling the void. Um, there's been a big rise in, in passive investing, and passive in investors um, they don't need research. Now, there's a you know I'm not going to get it into it here because passive invest investing still needs estimates, right? So it's kind of a two-edged sword. And we I'm not going to talk about that. That would, that would be a topic for a different discussion. Um, I say decline in investment banking. Maybe that's a little dramatic, Andy, uh, but the reality is. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that companies are getting money these days, and, and, and the research shops of investment banks are declining. There's no question about it. The, um, there is, uh, on the investment banking side, on the research side, the 
it's limited report distribution and earnings posting. I'm going to talk about that in a few more slides. I just want to throw that out there now. But the other thing is I, I do want to talk about is, you know, everyone looks at, well, sell-side research is, is free, right? Why should I pay for it when I get it for free, right? Number one, number one, you can't get it. And number two, it's not as free as you think. I mean, it's, you think about the time and effort that's required on the part of the, uh, the CEO and the CFO uh, dealing with, you know, the research side. They want you to go to their conferences. They want you to do non-deal roadshows. They want you to do conference calls. And they're constantly putting pressure on you for M&A investment banking activities. Now, if it's a research, you know, uh, if it's an investment bank that you want to do uh, banking business with, that's fine. But how many of the other ones out there, you have no, in no intent whatsoever of doing banking business with them? They're still taking up a lot of your time. I would argue that sponsored research is a much more low-maintenance way to go. And that's why a lot of companies come to us. Well, I would also add that many of the customers and issuers in OTCQB and QX are also micro cap and small cap issuers, so the breadth of coverage might not extend from the investment bank per se oh, into what you're saying. No. So they're much more selective about who they choose. Ah, no question. So that's directing more smaller cap issuers to focus on it. So, no question. so this leads us into why does sponsored research make sense for an issuer in our markets? Well, um, I think we've gotten past, uh, hopefully we've gotten past the point where you need research, all right? You need research, all right? And I think I'm, we're, you're going to see how I'm going to segue here to sponsored research. Um, you need research. We've talked about that, all right? The reality is, is that now if you look at sponsored research, it's a whole different distribution model than a, um, on the, uh, in, on the uh, investment banking side. Number one, the investment, you know, real-time sell-side research are really not available to many institutional investors, all right? The, the investment bank research arms are only sending the research to their clients, many of which are, you know, are larger institutions that really have no ability or interest in, in investing in microcaps. And from the, from the uh, platform side, many of the smaller institutions, they're not subscribing, they're, they're embar they're, they get the research on an embargo basis. So the distribution side of the sell side research is very, very limited relative to that coming from uh, sponsored research. Um, and I guess what, I'm, what I want to get to is um, the, the final question. At, at the, I'm asking a question that somebody here should ask, right? And I'll ask it and I'll answer it. Um, you know, we have sell side research, right? Do we also need sponsored coverage? And I'm going to say, yes, they do. And this is something I might not have said, you know, six, seven uh, years ago. But today, you do. It's a whole different model. So you kind of covered a couple of areas as we start to get a little more micro into this. Let's talk a little bit about the advantages of the sponsored research. Well, um, there's, there's, there's a few things that, that come to mind. Number one is, is, hey, you're paying for the research, okay? So generally speaking, uh, we're going to – it, we're going to initiate on you when you decide, not necessarily when uh, when we decide. All right. Um, so it, it's really what we initiate at the best time from you know in terms of an inflection point in, in the company, things like that. Not what makes sense for us. What makes sense for you? Number one. Number two is uh, sponsored research, and I, I alluded to it a little bit. Has we feel a much better distribution kind of a network than, uh, than, than the sell side, frankly. On the, in, on the institutional side, all right, it re sponsored research, because you pay for it, it's fully entitled, fully entitled. Everyone who has access to a, um, uh, one, of the, one of the platforms like Thomson Reuters uh, you know, or Bloomberg or things like that is going to, assuming that the sponsored research shop is posting their research there, like Zach does, or Zach Small Cup Research does, Everyone is going to see that research fully entitled. There is no embargo. It's real time. Okay. The second thing is because it's everyone sees it around the world. Like Zach's, for example, Zach's small pack research is on all 300,000 Bloomberg terminals around the world. It's for everyone to see, not just the, it, it, not just the sector focus uh, uh, portfolio manager and analyst, but it's also the generalist. So everyone's going to see it. And then on the uh, on the retail side, I mean, the reality is 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 you know. 80%, most microcaps, about 80%, you know, they have about 80% retail ownership. And when I say retail, I'm talking high net worth, family offices, 
uh, you know, credited investors. So, you know, I should probably say non-institutional. Um, they, um, you know, and I think these sponsored research shops, including Zach's MoCap Research, have really built up their distribution networks on the retail side because that is the nature of, of the microcap world. Uh, also, uh, a lot, many of our clients are posting this research on their website. Right? They're, it's fully entitled. You pay for it. You can put it wherever you want. They're putting out press releases announcing that the research has been out there. Again, it's fully entitled. So the point of this slide, Andy, is uh, I think we've, we've come to the point, frankly, we're getting to the, we've come to the point where we've turned the corner. Our research, right, is, you know, our analysts are as, as good as the uh, sell side, and our uh, research uh, distribution, I think, is better. Simple as that. So we have, we've discussed distribution, depth of distribution, entitlement. Um, let's talk a little bit about a question that always comes up with biases. And you know, we know that uh, broker dealers are regulated by uh, FINRA 2241 and 3110, which talks about how is research on bias, how, uh, how to be a supervisory analyst. But tell us a little bit about, you know, is sponsored research credible? If I pay you to write about my company, what do you put in place? to actually make sure that research is credible? Okay, well, um, there's, there's two ways I'm gonna answer that, is what do we do and what has the outside world done, all right? From our perspective, all right, and, and if you look at, you know, look at any reputable sponsored research shop, all right, all of those shops, they're going to meet the FINRA standards, right? The analysts and the, and the uh, either they are FINRA members or they're gonna meet the standards, number one, okay? Number two is, um, every every reputable sponsored research shop is going to have in their website is going to have all of their analysts and all their qualifications. Right? If you look at the Zach Small Cap Research website, all the you know all, all 10, 11, 12 of our analysts, all their all their uh, bios are there. You know their uh, you know all you know uh, PhDs, CFAs, yeah. Yeah. CPAs, those kinds of things. We're, we're, and most uh, sponsored research shops are also going to uh, talk about the uh, you know, the depth of their coverage, you're going to see all of their research, who, co who they cover. And in the case of Zach's and, and probably some of the others, uh, we have, uh, we'll display the most recent research we have on each piece. So you can really get a real good sense, uh, right, very, fairly quickly about, you know, the, the quality of the research shop. But the other things I want to uh, mention is, number one, um, is you mentioned at your, at your opening, you guys have vetted us. You know, OTC Markets has vetted us and included us. In, in your research marketplace. You've done your due diligence on us. And I think that, you know, the issuers can get comfort out of that. But also um, look at the, you know, in, inclusion of the research on these institutional platforms and look at the estimates. Um, I, I like to talk about, and again, I'll talk Zach's small cap research, but it's also the same, same for some other uh, research, sponsor research shops. You know, our research makes its way to Thomson Reuters, all right, Bloomberg, um, FactSet, S&P Capital IQ. Our estimates are also in each of those platforms. Our, our Zach small cap research estimates are in the first call consensus. Our estimates are equally weighted with that from Goldman Sachs, for example. So I think that should give issuers, you know, so clearly those platforms have done their vetting of our research and our, our analysts and the quality of our research by the fact they're including our estimates, you know, in their numbers. So, um, and then also that, um, you know, so I think those are, those are, you know, the key points that I want to make. I mean, and, you know, there was, a, there, I, I have lots of studies. I mentioned lots of studies in here, Andy, that, you know, stock performance after a, a sponsored research initiated reports were found to be higher than those coming out of broker research, for example. So, um, but I think there's a lot, there's a lot of uh, reasons to find sponsored research credible. And maybe we could talk a little bit about, uh, you know, perceived biases. You know? Uh, I but I think it's I think it's a I think it's a great idea to to go into you know the misperceptions of sponsored research uh, being biased or not. But tell me a little bit about um, the biases that you've seen, and what are some of the challenges that you faced. Well, I mean, I mean, it's well, the bias is is is, is simply, um, hey, you know, how can it be? How can it? How can you be independent if if, if the company's paying for it? All right. So I mean, the bottom line is is 
there is that perception. I think we've done a, a lot. The industry's done a lot to overcome that perception, and we're 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 we've made tremendous headway. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, this is I always like to say this is not your uh, parent-sponsored research. Okay. Um, I mean, look, the SEC Advisory Committee came out a few years ago and officially endorsed issuer-sponsored research. I mean, it's almost like full stop right there. There's your, uh, you know, you know they, they, they vetted us also. Um, a, a number of us in the, in the sponsored research industry like to say the reality is companies aren't going to pay for research if they truly, you know, if they truly don't feel that they're neglected or, or undervalued. I mean, that's kind of the, the it's great logic that everyone, we all like to use. Um, the... Um, there's got to be proper controls in yeah, place. Yeah, let me get to that. Yeah. What are the controls that you put in place, and what are best right. practices? Because, you know, the firms that you have across the research marketplace platform all provide an incredibly good service. You guys have a vetting process. You don't take just anybody. Oh, no, no. We, so so how, do you, how do you actually put the controls in place? You, you, it is, yeah. The, 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 you know, we have to keep this thing arm's length. We have to. We wouldn't be in business, right? We wouldn't be in business for as long as, you know, we've been in business, as, as I mentioned before for, you know, well over 10, 10, 11, 12 years, something like that. If, if we if we were an independent, we wouldn't be in business. And investors wouldn't, you know, wouldn't pay attention to us or, you know, what we have to say. There's a few things. Number one is there's a, there is a pretty strict protocol process that we go through. We don't, we're not going to cover a company that, you know, we're, if a company is not coverable, we're not going to cover it, if that makes any sense. If there's, if there's, if it doesn't have the right, um, you know, stock ownership profile to allow for people to get in and, and, and trade, we're probably not going to cover it, right? Um, so, you know, we're going to go through, we're, if there's stock, if there's any kind of hit, we'll do, we're going to do background checks on the company, you know, on the CEO, the CFO, and if there's any kind of issues whatsoever, we're not going to cover the company. If, if uh, there's a pretty rigorous protocol that we go through, number one, on the company, we probably turn down, you know, as many as we, we accept, all right? So it, it's, it's we don't you know it's not like you pay us and we'll cover you no it doesn't work that way at all um we do require uh you know a couple uh, straightforward things upfront payment you got to pay up front right it's not like at the end you pay up front for the research all right uh, we don't accept you know and, and a reputable uh sponsored research firm is not going to accept stock or options or anything like that okay we when we prepare the research okay you are going to have the uh, opportunity to fact check the report that's put together, but you will have no say in the, in the financial model, nor you have any say in the uh, targets that we set. We actually don't do uh, buy, hold, sell. We just do targets. You know, we do pr uh, price targets, and then the investors based on hor investment horizon can make their own decisions, okay? So um, we do, there are a number of controls in place, and it's probably similar among the other sponsored research shops to ensure that, um, you know, that that this thing is kept arm's length, right? I, I, at the bottom there, I say that, you know, sponsored research providers protect their brand. I mean, we, we have to protect our brand. Just like any kind of a publication that protects this brand, we're protecting our brand. If, if we're found to be not arm's length, not reputable, we'd be out of business pretty darn quick. Simple oh, that. That, that's good to hear. I know that in the process when we work in uh, evaluating research, uh, uh, providers, we go through a very rigorous compliance process, background checks, um, you can't take stock or options for writing research, It's it's got to be cash payment, so you don't have conflicts of interest related to that, and we've turned down as many, if not more, than what we've taken. But I want to shift gears a little bit, because here we are. We talked about the, 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 the benchmark and foundation of, of credible sponsored research. I'm a CEO of a microcap company, and you know, I understand that good distribution is important. Ability for me to talk about my company and trends and distribute that both on my website. You have the distribution to various funds who might be of interest in, in looking at my at my company. You have a bench of analysts that can cover a variety of industries and sectors. But if I'm a CEO, what do I what do I need to think about and do when I want to hire a research house to uh, purchase sponsors. Well, I think there's, uh, you know, as my slide says, there's uh, there's some do's that the CEO should think about, and there's some don'ts, right? And the, the do's, I mean, this is kind of a recap of what we've talked about is, you know, number one, you must have an, a reputable analyst coverage, must have, right? Um, and uh, I, number two, I would engage sponsored research. Whether you have sales or not, I would 
I would definitely engage sponsored research, right? Obviously, a little self-serving because, you know, work for uh, Zach Small Cap Research. But sponsored but research, if I'm not covered by cell-side analytics, it, it, it's the only given. choice I have to get into. That is a given, and that's a given. But through this, through this, what I'm trying to, the point I want to make is, even if you have it, all right, uh, I think sponsored research is, is a good complement or addition to, you know, a portfolio of analysts covering your company. Because sponsored research can then be distributed it, it, to those who don't have access a better to distribution. Special programs, whether you have, don't have access to facts. Better so distribution. I can then reach a larger group of investors who can then better analyze value and trade my stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would evaluate the sponsored research firm. I mean, look at, I mean, as sponsored research firms, um, you, you want to look at their uh, uh, breadth of coverage, you know, the analysts and, um, you know, the quality of, of, of the uh, research that they're doing, the companies that they're covering. And you can see all that in most you know, in most sponsored research uh, website, um, including Zach's. I mean, Zach's, for example, we, we, as I, we've got, we cover now about 120 or so uh, companies under coverage. Probably about half of them are in the, the biotech, biopharm space. Um, and then we, um, uh, you know, probably covered well over three, 350 companies in the 10 years we've been in existence. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a it's, it's, you, can, you can see that, and I'm sure you go to the other ones, you can see the kind of companies, and those, that, that would help you determine what might, you know, at one starting point, what might make sense, what's the best uh, sh uh, firm for, for our particular company. But I think there's some, also some don'ts that the uh, CEO's got to keep in mind, all right? They are going to put you through the ringer, through a protocol process. Don't dismiss the firm if the protocols seem too restrictive, okay? They are looking, the reputable... Um, sponsored research firm is going to look for, uh, I'll use the term loosely, uh, any kind of stock promotion activities you've been doing. And if, you're, and, and if they don't pass the test, they're not going to cover you. Um, don't expect to have any input into the financial model or the price target. You're paying for it and you think you do? No. You're going to have no input from a reputable sponsored research uh, firm. Don't expect to pay for the research after it's published and you're all a nice report and you're all happy about it. It's just not going to happen, right? Um, don't expect to pay with anything other than, you know, frankly, cold, hard cash, right? No, no stock, no options. And another thing is, is once that research is out there, let's keep it flowing, all right? You want to keep that research flowing. Um, don't think that you're going to, you know, like, I'll do, well, we had a good quarter, let's, let's, let's pay for some research. We had a bad quarter, let's not, let's keep the information in-house. No, once you start, once you open the tap, you got to keep that good research uh, out there and going, all right? And I think that's... Uh, frankly, how I want to uh, finish up from my end, Andy. No, I think we've kind of, uh, we've touched into exposing our issuers or dial-ins to uh, the benefits of sponsored research and how it's probably an important choice for companies to really have to uh, choose that if they're not covered uh, by the cell side. Right. Um, and it looks like we're populating with a bunch of questions. Um, I think we have some that we want to start with here. Um, so, one question here uh, is, how long does reporting take once an issuer establishes contact with you? What, what's the general timeline to, to, uh, to proceed? Yeah, well, um, every, every research shop might be a little different here, but I think, you know, I can talk in general, uh, you know, some of the things I'll talk about Zach's, but they probably apply to the other shops. Um, it usually takes about, you know, four, five, six weeks to uh, get an initiation piece out there. All right. The, the analyst is going to, the analyst is, is going, is on the outside looking in and is going to do his or her homework uh, on, on the company. I mean, they're, they're familiar with the industry and the sector, but they're going to dive down into your particular niche within that industry or sector. They're going to do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of reading, a lot of research on the outside. Then uh, what they're going to do is probably going to set up, you know, conversations with, you know, the, uh, you know, CEO, the CFO, if it's, you know, if it's in the bio world, the CMO and things like that. Um, generally, you'll get a, um, a draft report in maybe, you know, a month's time, something like that. Uh, uh, and then, you'll again, as I mentioned before, you'll have an opportunity to, uh, uh, opportunity to you know, fact check. But that's it. It's so you're looking at about four, four to six five weeks, weeks. Yeah, something like and, that. And this a second question related to that is there's two separate questions, and I'll let you answer how you want to. Is um, how much time does a CEO, or how much time should a CEO expect 
to devote to sponsored research analysts? Um, well, um, at the beginning of the process, right, they're going to they're going to have to uh, you know spend some time with the analysts, you know, through the and through the interview process and, and the and the vetting and things like that. So it's going to be a little bit upfront. After that, it's really on the CEO and the company, right? How far do you want to take it? We, you know, it, it's we are producing the research, we are getting it into the right investors' hands, um, but then from there, you've got to uh, determine investor engagement. How much do you want to engage, right? And and it, it's it, in a lot in, in a lot of cases, it's going to be a low maintenance effort on the part of the CEO. It's 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 in you know the research is in the right hands now. We, we, now the question is, how do you want to, the investors to act on that information? How do you want to get them? How are you going to get them to cut the check? Uh, does the does the uh, CEO want to you know get involved with a big roadshow activity, things like that? It's certainly their call. If you're doing it on the uh, from the sell side, they'll put tremendous pressure on you to do those kinds of things. Sponsored research shops go about it a little. It, it, depending on the shop, they go about it different. You know, Zax is you know Zax does it one way, Edison does it one way, Sedoti does it a third way. Yeah. So they all have their own style, right. and they all provide a very good service. And um, another question is coming up: when when you cover a company, do you just cover quarterly reports? In other words, what's the typical footprint of a company that Zacks covers? Yeah, it, and, and again, I'll, I'll talk from from the Zacks small cap research side. But again, probably similar to the other shops. Uh, our standard is is a is a, a one year contract with the companies, and we're going to issue probably. Um, you know, six, seven, eight research pieces, you know, per year, including the initiation report. It's really a function of, you know, market moving inflection points by the company. If, 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 if the company that does its, you know, quarterly reporting, uh, whether it be simply a 10Q or if they also have an earnings release, you know, our, 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 uh, our analyst certainly is going to put out a, a, a note or a research report after each SEC filing. If there is a uh, if there's an earnings call, he's going to be, he or she's going to be on the call, and they're going to do the research after that. And a lot of times, there's, there's, if there's market moving information within intra quarter, they're going to put out a research piece on that also. So, so in addition to the quarterly reports, which are four, you would have, you would have maybe up to four or five more. So if you there's might have nine notes, if there's something to say, if we're not, we're not going to put it out just for the sake of putting it out, right? If there's nothing to say, you know. We have we have a few more questions that sure. we can get through while we're while we're going through this. We still have some time. Um, this is an interesting question: Is market perception changing on the buy side to sponsored research compared to sell side research? Um, yes, it is. I mean, there's no question. It's it's you know it's 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 moving the direction we want to move. You know, particularly through time. I mean, for, for you know it's it's the the, the folks you know. Uh, the folks on the, on the buy side now, uh, you know, are you know, a lot of them weren't around, you know, uh, 15, 20 years ago. Whenever sponsored research had a different connotation, so I think it's there's no question that you know, the buy side is reading our research, acting on our research, um, and, and making investment de decision based on our research. No, so no more, question about more it. More information to right. evaluate. I mean, typically, I would think as Although I'm not a research analyst, if I if, or I'm not a hedge fund operator, but if I consume as much information as possible, I can see what the general consensus is around most reports. Um, and if I see sponsored research falling in line with that, it, it, yeah. it's, it's there, I mean, again, again, it's, it's, we're not making buy, hold, sell. This. We're not going out to uh, PM and saying, you know, Got it. buy, right? We're giving a price target, right? Mm -hmm. And 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 what they they read our research, right? To get insights into the sector, insights to the company, and where we, what, 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 how our models, you know, what our models look like, and those kinds of things. So, they, and then from there, they make their informed decision. Right? We're not, we're not telling them buy. Let's put it that way. So, I got another question. This always comes up, and you know, in general, what is the general cost ballpark of getting research, uh, at least through Zach's? Well, I mean, the research is is. Uh, you know, research could run, um, you know, uh, uh, twenty-five-ish thousand. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and uh, different shops might be higher price, lower price, that kind of thing. Again, if you're gonna, if you're, you know, if you're paying, let me say it this way: if you're, if somebody comes to you and they're gonna do it for ten thousand dollars, don't do it. You're paying too little. Okay, simple as that. You got to And then I think you're gonna get into. I mean, there, there, are, there are. Uh, um, Companies can pay up, you know, forty thousand or something annually for research. It, it, the real 
differentiator is going to be um, a little bit on the uh, the back end in terms of the uh, investor engagement. Okay, right? Some shops, you know, that's kind of an add-on to the base. For others, it's, it's part of the deal. You know, the investor engagement side. And you know, and and let's face it, microcap companies have a budget, right? So there are there's a there's a different kind of sponsored research shop for a different kind of microcap companies depending on their budget and how much they want to you know take it and run with it. That so it leads me to another question, uh, which is, you you seem to cover a diverse group of companies. What are the requirements for analysts, and are you industry sensitive? Uh, it, you, what's the current composition of your portfolio? But also, what is the requirements of your analysts, and how do you? I, I would, that? you know, I would, I would definitely, if, if you're a microcap company. One of the ways that you want to, you know, choose between sponsored research shops is, is you know, the the background of the analyst and the sector focus that they have. I, and I'll speak from from Zach's perspective. You know, we've got about I said 120, 130 companies under coverage now, but half of them are in the uh, the biotech, biopharm space. So by naturally, over half our half or more of our analysts have that kind of uh, uh, you know PhD uh, uh, background to to support that. Model, about 70%, broadly speaking, of our uh, of our um, coverage is you know in the broader healthcare field, for example. Now, if you're a uh, you know we, we cover all industries, but I think you know we cover all industries, uh, including you know technology, manufacturing, things like that. But there might be other sponsored research sh shops that have a, a, a bigger focus in a different area that um, you know we, we might not. I have I have a question okay. for you, Ray. Uh, do you cover cannabis companies, and are you are you adverse to any industry or have any industry restrictions at Zax? Uh, no, we don't. We don't have any. We we do cover cannabis companies. We've got a uh, uh, we've got a few can cannabis companies um, um, under coverage now, so we don't have any restrictions. I will say a lot of the cannabis companies, you know, are you know coming out of Canada. There are some uh, uh, restrictions on. In Canada, on sponsored research and how how you can distribute that spot, it's fully entitled. Like here in the United States, uh, post it on your, uh, for example, post it on your uh, website. Um, Canadian companies in general, not just cannabis, but, but there are a lot coming out of Canada. For example, you know you're you're, you're not you know not permitted to post uh, sponsored you know, research on your websites because you're crossing into investor relations, and that's not an area that we necessarily want to cross because that becomes more of an insider. So we have to just be careful about that. OTC markets through our QB and our QX premium issuer market discuss uh, has portals where ex where issuers can actually post research uh, to their profile page, um, which creates another venue of distribution. But um, one of the, what, there's another question I want to go after, and I think this is probably a question to the independents. Um, a question comes up, and I think, how can, a research firm that provides sponsored research be independent if a company is paying for it. And, you know, let's let's flip that question, you know, to the company order. Is it the same as principal agency issues? I mean, if I'm paying you for research, is that independent? How 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 would you in general approach that? And I think it's probably a general question for many of our research houses, but yeah, I mean it's it's it, it's it's the old age old question, Andy. I mean, you, you know, I'm paying for it, so I want you to write, you know, what I want you to write. And 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 hopefully uh, through this presentation, we've we've kind of talked about the protocols we have in place and the protocols we have in place, and and the way that we look at companies and uh, you know to hopefully answer that question of the controls we have in place. Um, and and the ultimate control is is. You know, we're, you're 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 paying us first, or we're writing research later. Okay, it's not it's you pay up front, and and the research is what our analyst decides it's going to be. All right, and it's it's not dissimilar. For, you know, and it, yes, there's a lot of other situations where companies are paying for something that's purport, you know, independent auditing firms being you know a perfect example of that, rating agencies, things like that. So I think the controls I talked about, you know, hopefully allay a lot of the concerns. You know, the, the upfront payments, the um, the protocols that we go through, the um, the fact that we're not displaying any kind of price targets or financial models ahead of time to the company. It is what it is when it comes out. And, I'll, I'll, you know, 
And then when they see it, a lot of CEOs, when they see the, the, the models and the price targets, you know, discussion ensues. There's, there's no question about it, but that's the, that's the way it is. We wouldn't stay in business with, with, we wouldn't stay in business, you know, if, if we truly weren't independent from these companies. In, in the research uh, marketplace uh, for the diverse group of research providers that we have, it seems to me that in reviewing all the applications that have come in, the general adherence is to the best practices as has been dictated under FINRA Rule 2241 and 3110, which as a broker dealer, you know, how is research generally unbiased and how to be a supervisory analyst? And I think those best practices tend to be followed by uh, most of the firms in their own words, even if they're not a broker dealer like yourself, there's several others that are not either, but they adhere to a principle like that. Um, I think I've got, oh, I've got one more question that just popped up on my screen. Hang on. Does it make sense? Let this, this goes to at what stage should, uh, should research be initiated? If, uh, does it make sense for a pre-revenue company with no earnings to, per share to pay for sponsored research? Uh, maybe that could be a biotech or, or a research and development uh, company in the healthcare space. But the question again is, you know, does it make sense for a pre-revenue company with no earnings per share to pay for sponsors? Well, um, um, as I mentioned before, like I'll talk about Zach. I mean, half of our half of our uh, companies that we have under coverage are biotech or biofarms in the microcap space. They are they are what you just described. They are pre pre-revenue companies. Um, they're they're pre-revenue company biotechs, biofarms, and it, the coverage makes sense for them because you know the stock matters. The stock is it's a combination of the currency of their stock matters. They're constantly trying to raise money, right? They're going to raise money for the for their latest, you know, for the latest, you know, trials that they're going on undergoing, and this, the, the value of their stock matters. So they want to keep that visibility. Plus, they want to keep the visibility out there with investors and potential investors when they go through their Series B or their Series C or additional capital raises, whatever the case may be, you know. And we do we do a lot of research, you know, on uh, you know on on you know non-public companies also, for example. So uh, you know it, you know. It, listen, if you don't care what, about your stock price, right? If you don't know who owns you and you don't care about your stock price, you know we don't. We're not going to help you, right? But if you care about that stuff, you want research, and that's where we come it's, in, or any of the other sponsored research shops. It, it, it's a beneficial way to have written information about your company available to investors who might be interested in your company. And you know, our goal here is to have transparent information for efficient markets and, and, and leave the risk decision right. to the investors who can choose how they want to analyze value and trade uh, with their own risk model for the security. Um, again, Richard, I want to thank you. Uh, thank Zach uh, for coming in to giving us an overview of the sponsored research. Uh, our contact details are on the back of both Giles, uh, a managing director at Zach's Small Cap Research, Brian Marks, who is the director of research, and Richard, your details are there, as well as mine and Matt Leteplos in our group. So if anybody has any further questions. Yeah, I don't know. If we, if, we didn't get through all, if we didn't get through all the questions in the time we had, there's, you know, just re, give me a call or send me an email. There's, there's uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to answer, you know, any other questions you have offline. Um, just as a, just to wrap it up, um, the presentations will be available for download on the uh, on the website, and to, it will be distributed to all who have um, uh, dialed into the call. The call will be archived, and it's also available on our YouTube channel. Um, thank you, Richard. Um, thanks, uh, thanks to our marketing team at OTC Markets for producing this webinar and we'll continue with our educational series uh, over the upcoming months. No, you're welcome, Andy. Thanks for having me.